What's happening, Wanderers? Welcome to Machu Picchu in Peru. Let's go. Welcome to the Sacred Valley Adventures, where my wife Vanessa and I travel throughout the magical country of Peru, deep into the Andes Mountains to discover the real beauty of Peru. Vamanos. We're going to Machu Picchu. All right, so we made it up the hill, took the bus to Machu Picchu. Nice bright and early, about 8.15 in the morning, and there's already a nice, cute, long line for us, guys. So, did our best to get here early. Have to get in by nine. Hopefully this line takes less than 40 minutes. We shall see. So we finally made it past the line, everybody. It took about 23 minutes in the views to even get there insane. These beautiful green lush mountains covered by clouds, or not covered, but a little bit shrouded in clouds, gives that mysterious lost city feel in Machu Picchu. So it begins. All right, already going up the stairs. It's a little hotter than I thought it was gonna be, but uh, hey, at least it's not cloudy and uh, not visible. So far, the weather looks perfect. To reach Machu Picchu, you still need to hike a little bit through the forest, but my oh my, you'll be greeted with some stunning views along the way. Guys, the views up here are insane. Look at these green mountains, look at the clouds. And although we have not yet entered Machu Picchu, we're in the surrounding area and it is so atmospheric with the clouds, the old structures being visible, the beautiful green lush mountains, the birds flying around. I really do feel like we are somewhere special. Look at the headsteps you get up there, although they're steep. Hola. Hola, amigo. Adios. See, you guys are so cute. These are scratching your butt right in front of you, though. How do you float like that? Where do your legs go? And then, of course, we have beautiful Machu Picchu and one eye Picchu right there surrounding us. It's perfect. We can see everything and there's that light misty sort of like wispy clouds behind it which gives it that mysterious feel which makes it feel like I'm actually exploring a lost city without it totally obstructing the views at all. After taking in these unobstructed gorgeous views of Machu Picchu, we began to make our way down towards the citadel and we could not believe the stunning scenery around us including the mountains, Wanai Picchu, the little sort of terraces that lead a little bit of a walking path to the citadel. It was so gorgeous and we even saw a condor flying around in the misty mountains, which we'll talk more about the significance of condors later for the Incan culture. But let's explore beautiful Machu Picchu. So we've enjoyed the beautiful views of Machu Picchu from above on the mountains. Now it's time to actually enter the old La Citadel, try and see some notable buildings and structures, and get a really close up personal look of Peru's most famous tourist attraction, and to me what so far has been the most extravagant Incan ruins that I've seen in this country. Let's go check it out. So now let's enter the lost citadel of Machu Picchu, a really cool area with so many structures and little areas to walk in that make you feel like you're walking the footsteps of the old Incas that used to live here. You're just a little too tall. So one notable point of interest right behind me is a bunch of big rocks that aren't really in the shape of anything. Now why is that interesting? Because those big rocks were the raw materials they actually used to build this citadel behind us, which they called the quarry. So you can still see it today, all those rocks, which probably were rocks slid down from the mountains and gathered, which were used to construct with their primitive tools, they didn't have like fine cutting tools for the stones. They would just kind of like force them into the shapes to build things. But anyways, that's where they harvested the rocks and gathered it and moved it around this mountaintop to make all the beautiful structures that are still present today. Hola amigo, que tal? So while we're up here, what exactly is Machu Picchu? 
Machu Picchu in Quechua means old mountain, even though it's commonly known as Lost City. And it's commonly known as Lost City because it actually wasn't described or discovered until the early 20th century, around like 1914, I believe, 1911, something like that, by an archaeologist from Yale. And he actually came here and searched for another ruins, but he met some local Quechuan people that told him about this mountain and they actually showed it to him and then he discovered it and then the word got out to the Western world and then tourism started to boom and it became a seventh wonder of the world sometime in the 20th century as well. And it was actually thought to be a royal retreat, places where royalty would come to you know, live a bit more of an extravagant lifestyle or escape and get away. And uh, it was actually built back in the 15th century, 1400s, sometime in there. And it was built, still in construction for about 100 years. And then eventually they had to leave. It's not known exactly why they left. So people have theorized maybe it's because of lack of water. You know, there was some sort of a maybe loose aqueduct system to get water up here. It's high up in the mountains and the Uramama River is really far below. They also maybe think that potentially could have been some sort of a disease like uh, smallpox that um, was running through this city and they had to leave well, the Incas that lived here originally and it was also known to not have actually had a battle uh, have happened here at all because the Incans typically the battles they had amongst one another would be arranged and then set areas not within the cities themselves and the Spanish never uh, came here to fight in the battles against the Incas they just found the city abandoned as it was so really interesting history to keep in mind while exploring Machu Picchu right below me is one of the most impressive archaeological sites and structures that you can find in Machu Picchu or any Incan ruins for that matter. It is the Templo del Sol or the Temple of the Sun and you can in instantly tell it because it has that curved sort of wall and you can see uh, numerous windows there as well. So the Temple of the Sun was used for some important uh, ceremonies, rituals, and sort of like spiritual practices to take and consider the importance of the sun for like crop production and those sort of things. But it was also used for a bit of a calendar because with the windows in the Temple of Sun, when the sun shined through one of them, it would indicate the winter solstice, which is the longest day of the year. And when the sun shined through the other, it would indicate the summer solstice, which would be the shortest day of the year. And they positioned them perfectly to line up with the way the sun would rise in the east or uh, another time of year. So really interesting to see how they had the sophisticated structures for um, cultural reasons and for interesting civilization. Vanessa's arm's getting really tired, so that's <laughs> it for that, guys. <laughs> Behind me, everybody, is another notable structure. It's called Intihuatana, which is basically an Incan sundial, which they used for similar reasons as the Temple of the Sun, but more sophisticated way of telling time, where the temple was used for that and other things as well. So really cool to see. Apparently, it's the only structure of its kind that Spanish conquerors didn't like destroy or didn't get ruined throughout their conquest. So really cool to check that out and see more sophisticated technology created by the Incans. And of course, you cannot miss the gorgeous terraces here at Machu Picchu. They are a very typical sign of most ruins that we can find in Peru. And number one, they're really cool architecturally. It's in the different layers and levels. They're a lot taller than you would imagine and harder to build into the side of the mountains. And a lot of times they were used for agricultural reasons and sort of structural reasons. So for example, they grew things like potatoes, corn, rice, and like those different things. So really important crops that they could like eat year round. And they're also built to sort of section off and build city walls or act like a defense for a fortress type of setting such as in Oriente Tambo. So really cool to check those out and also know that they were used for very um, practical reasons to maintain their civilizations back in the day. So right behind me is the Templo del Condor or Temple of the Condor and it's really cool because it took the rocks and shaped them specifically to make the shape of the condor. If you're creative you can kind of see the wings and the head on the floor and then behind it there's actually a bit of an underground cave sort of tomb where they found lots of mummified bodies which is really interesting of course for archaeologists to archaeologists. Archaeologi uh, I give up to discover. You know what I'm talking about. Now, the significance of the condor is in the Incan traditions and religions, there's three important animals. The condor, the puma, and the serpent. And the condor represents sort of the heavens and the gods of spiritual life. So it's interesting to think that they have a temple related to that sort of thing, but it makes sense when you consider the significance of that bird in Incan traditions and spirituality. So really cool to keep that temple in mind with the other notable structures we've seen thus far in Machu Picchu. So here's a pro tip, everybody. The buses to Machu Picchu are a little expensive. So um, I think it's like $12 a person for one way. So it's $24 round trip for like not even an hour of bus time. And the hike up there, it's straight uphill. It's like two miles going up the mountain to Machu Picchu. So it's pretty freaking difficult. So if you're up for a challenge, 
and you have a whole day, go for it. It'll take you about three hours and you'll be so tired and you'll walk around Machu Picchu sweaty and exhausted. And then you can come back down, save a bunch of money and then go in the hot springs afterwards, just chill the rest of the day and uh, soothe your aching body. The pro tip, then a happy medium, is take the bus up there because it's a really hard hike up. My legs are trembling just from going downhill. Spend $12 and then hike the way down. The views are really pretty and it's all downhill. It's a little long, but a lot better than going uphill. My legs are definitely tired, but saved $12. Between Vanessa and I, we saved 24 So definitely worth considering doing that if you want a bit of nature and save a bit of money without making this a total workout. How are you doing, Vanessa? See, she's happy that we did this option too. So that's all for the Sacred Valley Adventures, the finale at Machu Picchu. Thank you so much to all of you that tuned along to the whole series. If you've seen the other episodes, make sure to check them out. And let me know down in the comments if you want to see more guides or things to do in the Sacred Valley or for Peru and how to travel this beautiful country that had so much fun showing to everybody behind the camera. And also, you might have noticed I am not in Peru right now. I am actually in Southeast Asia where it is killer hot and I will be making some videos, a really long series covering this beautiful part of the world. So check those out if you're interested. Thanks so much for watching everybody. I love you all. Peace.